You're watching the Color 8 First News at 5. Good evening and welcome to the Color 8 First News at 5. I'm Sarah Gravely. This is usually where the pond ends. There's a steep drop off under the water. The tornado literally ripped the roof off of Metro Park and scattered pieces of what was once the building across the heights. In his first live interview of the evening, Congressman Denny Reberg is joining us now. I am actually standing on the runway right now. You almost cannot even tell that there was ever a structure there, except for the fact that there is debris scattered all around it. Actually, you can see two light fours on the roof of the building completely across the street from the home that appears to have exploded. Crews based at Charleston Air Force Base have already made 165 stops here in Haiti. The main gun you see on this tank is a 120 millimeter cannon. Mild applause on Wall Street as the Dow closes more than 600 points down today. Sarah, have authorities caught all the bears and what's the latest on that front? Yeah, Mike, we actually just got an update. Officials caught all four bears. It was a mother bear and her three cubs. Dolly's out front, as she always has been. She's the most outgoing of the three. She's out eating a cantaloupe, putting on a show for some of the young viewers. Doors behind me here at Zoo Montana are closed, but just for the evening, the facility will remain open despite losing accreditation. Our goal was to raise $1,000. Take a look at this line. It looks like it could happen tonight. <laughs> The fair is all about having fun. We are having a great time out here. Moral of the story, take it slow and be safe out there tonight, guys. Thanks for being with us. Have a good night. It has now been three days since the Bears ransacked a Cook City campground. In the days since the attack, we have learned much more about the victims. I felt the tent just fly two, or two to three feet and this giant thing was on my leg. 21-year-old Ronald Singer of Colorado was the first to be attacked early Wednesday morning. There was no noise, no warning. Singer says he scared the bear off by hitting it in the head. This is not a free meal. The sow and her three cubs moved on to a tent a few sites away, where 58-year-old Deb Friel of Ontario was sleeping after a long day of fishing. The bear latched onto her arm. I couldn't believe the strength of this animal. I knew I was going to die. I mean, that that certainly was going through my head. Friel says she knew her only chance of survival was to play dead. When she did that, the bear moved on. I just went into survival mode. I thought I had to survive for my kids. The mother bear inexplicably moved to a third tent and this time killed. The body of 48-year-old Kevin Kammer of Grand Rapids, Michigan was found 25 feet from his tent. And that bear uh, attacked other people as well as my brother-in-law. They survived, fortunately, but he did not. I've been having a hard time dealing with that today. Cammer, like Friel, loved to fly fish. Jim Howard says his brother-in-law was living out a dream with a trip to Montana. Tragedy occurs and can occur at any time. Um, I think it's important for us to pursue what we love to do, even if there's the chance of tragedy. Of course, looking back, you know, you'd say, gosh, I wish I hadn't gone or we wished he hadn't gone, but he could have just as easily been hurt in Grand Rapids. Cammer, a gardener, avid fly fisherman, church volunteer, and family man will not be coming home. But Howard says he touched many lives. He was a wonderful father and a wonderful husband, uh, and I was proud to have him as a, as a brother-in-law. We're gonna miss him. Three campgrounds in that area remain closed. <laughs> A cloud of uncertainty surrounds the Bull Mountain Mine near Roundup. MSHA officials are on scene investigating a series of cave-ins starting July 18th. When it comes to cave-ins, there's nothing you can really do. I mean, if the, the mountain wants to come down on your head, it's going to. This man works mostly on the surface of the mine and didn't want to be identified for fear he would lose his job. It's good money. And, um, you know, there, there is uh, a lot of security. I mean, the, the mine isn't going to go anywhere. He says he was in one of the chambers that collapsed just days before it fell and says there were signs of trouble. A lot of movement, a lot of noise. Um, you know, we're doing what we can to support it. Signal Peak Energy President John DeMache says the company was aware of a weak area and was trying to add extra support. Prior to the fall, Signal Peak Energy had already noticed the impact of this deep cover. Things are quiet at the Bull Mountain Mine near Roundup as crews continue to investigate the series of collapses here. This isn't the first time the mine has been cited for safety violations. In 2010, they were cited for 44 violations, which could have caused serious injury or illness, according to MSHA. It's not safe and we need to figure it out one way or another. 
Elizabeth Jones's father works at the mine. She says he was recently injured trying to repair a moving belt. Well, it scares me because my dad goes to work every day and he's he's risking his life. I mean, everybody that goes to work every morning, every night is risking their life being there. Jones says men continue to work there for one reason. Because it's the only way to make money in Roundup. I mean, there's not enough jobs around here, so what you can get is what you can get. Dimache says safety is the company's number one priority, and he sees the collapses as a chance to learn. Anytime we have a situation such as, as we've had right here, it represents an opportunity to uh, assess uh, what we need to do to prevent a similar occurrence. The mine will stay closed until MSHA says it is safe. Signal Peak pays hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes every year. That goes to local schools and road repairs. They also recently donated $25,000 to flood relief efforts. When administrators at Hunley Project High School heard about the Yes I Can Award, they had to nominate 18-year-old Sam Charles. When we first saw the award come out, we thought this award is built for him. The award honors students with disabilities who are excelling in various ways. Shawls, who has fragile X syndrome, a form of autism, is among them. I think we needed three recommendation letters, and I believe we sent in 17 or 18 from people from the school district. Shawls helps out around the school by delivering mail and providing an extra eye for teachers. We try to get them kids to stop running around that corner and try to get them kids in line. But administrators say these tasks are only a small part of the way Shaw's influence is felt on campus. He can take any Wednesday, me specifically, if I'm having a terrible day, uh, a stressful day, as soon as Sam shows up, he can brighten your day just instantly. He's extraordinary. He's one in, he's one in a million, one in a billion probably. The Council for Exceptional Children agrees. Shawls was given the award at a recent school assembly. Why was everyone screaming? Because they all be, can't be quiet. No, but why? When, when you got the award? They wave. Yeah, they were waving and screaming. For who? For you. Not for me. For me. Words can't describe how, how proud I am of Sam Shawls. Shawls will graduate this spring, and administrators say it will be tough to see him go. I'm going to miss this place. I'm going to come visit these guys sometime. And he will be welcomed with open arms. In Warden, Sarah Gravely, Color 8 News.